So hi everyone, thanks uh, to the organizer for the invitation and uh, thanks everyone to show up today. And I want to acknowledge also my collaborator and su current supervisors, Sergei Lebedev and Nicolas Selin Dias, and also my previous uh, supervisor during my PhD, Saskia Goza and James Salmon, for um, the help that they provide for this study. So in this study, I focus on the origin of the volcanism in the Afro Arabian Reef system and uh, why we focus uh, in the, this region in particular. Because it's a, I, we think that is a perfect uh, region to understand the potential uh, in, in relationship between the surface phenomena and the mantle plume in the mantle. So in the Afar depression, over here, three main uh, plates meet the Arabian plate, the Nubian plate, and the Somalian plate in the Afar depression, forming the triple junction. The triple junction that is uh, including three main rifts, the Red Sea Rift, the Gulf of Aden, and the youngest uh, East African Rift. Also, the topography is uh, underlined by several uh, plateaus, in particular from south to north we have the Kenyan plateau over here, then we have the Ethiopia plateau, the Arabian plateau, and in, um, to the north we have the Turkish-Iranian uh, domes. The, the, these uh, plateaus are also, uh, is, they are high and they are, the, there is a volcanism widespread in all these areas. So we have the volcanism that start around 45 million years in uh, southern Ethiopia, but the main eruption, the large Igneous province start around 30 million years in uh, Ethiopia and in Yemen. After that, the volcanism spread toward south or the north, toward north in uh, West Arabia with the with the Arabian Narats that are very uh, young and then uh, continuing through the Levant uh, region and also in Anatolia. In the south, we have uh, the volcanism spreading all around the East African Rift until Tanzania, following, some, uh, following a linear spatial temporal um, trend. However, this volcanism is also is not uh, short-lived as, uh, as uh, expected for Ocean Highland, but is uh, still continuing nowadays. So many theories have been proposed, especially from uh, tomography, to explain this, uh, this volcanism this, uh, and this uplift and seismicity of the area that uh, span a passive origin of the rift, in particular the Red Sea uh, rift, they propose a, a passive origin um, due to far-field forces. But many studies uh, agree on, um, on the presence of uh, one single plume or several plumes. So the first theories uh, propose um, a big uh, mantle plume coming from South Africa and tilted toward Northeast uh, rising in Ethiopia and Arabia. Then there are uh, um, more recent ideas of uh, multiple uh, plumes, one below Kenya, one below Afar, and possibly another one below the Arabia. And also some uh, evidence that there is a uh, this uh, big Afar uh, plume that is um, uh, some part of the hot material from the Afar are spreading below thin lithosphere in Arabia and feeding the volcanism in, uh, in the Arabian shield. So uh, with this uh, work we want to address some questions. Here we are in presence of uh, active volcanism, faulting seismicity, one of the strongest upper mantle low velocity anomaly on the globe that uh, from uh, East Africa are extending toward if uh, West Arabia and Middle East. So we want to know what are the mantle roots, root of this volcanism, the shape and the scale of this upwelling, and uh, if it's possible to reconcile in a single geodynamic scenario or the geophysical and geochemical observation. Also, we want to know how this uh, rift system evolved with time. So basically, we test this uh, free and um, this idea of the multiple single uh, single mantle plume using seismic tomography and then we compare our seismic observation with the dynamic plume model from geodynamical modeling and then more recently we add some constraint from uh, eruption age and uh, plate reconstruction so here we, I show the most recent uh, body wave tomography that we have for the, for the part of this region, the Northern East Africa Rift, in particular below Afar and the main Ethiopian Rift. In, uh, during my PhD, I focused in this area uh, using a, a quite wide array that um, span um, in the north uh, station, the two stations that are uh, from Saudi Arabia in the north to Mozambique and Tanzania to the south. So we can uh, image uh, with confidence uh, the, all the upper mountain and the transition zone. 
So what we found is that uh, uh, we image a small scale structure, low velocity structure, just below the mini Japan Rift and the FAR, and seems to be um, this small scale structure seems to extend to the transition zone and uh, be sourced by a hot layer below the transition zone. So these uh, multiple upwelling that we found um, are basically the velocity are converted to temperature using a mineral physics approach that take into account the sensitivity of velocity to temperature with depth. And uh, we found that uh, a thermal anomaly of around 100 to 100 Kelvin is uh, needed to explain this seismic velocity. And this uh, thermal range is uh, is uh, in agreement with the previous uh, geochemical and uh, petrological studies. So a thermal anom uh, origin of this um, multiple welling is preferred. But to test this uh, idea, we use the uh, geodynamical model. We ask uh, our collaborator, John Hermitas, to run some uh, model of um, plumelets uh, using different destabilization. We first uh, uh, use a uh, Rayleigh-Bernard destabilization, and then also we test the Rayleigh-Taylor destabilization of hot layer uh, be uh, placed below the so We found is that with a Rayleigh-Bernard instability, the, the plumelets, as you can see here, are too thin, the tail of the plumelets are too thin to be detected with our seismic tomography. So we moved to a Rayleigh-Taylor destabilization that create uh, time-dependent uh, uh, mantle plume, as you can see here. So we, there's a destabilization of a hot layer placed in the, at the top of the lower mantle, produce uh, uh, plumets of, uh, in a late stage, like this one in a middle stage and early stage of evolution. So this plume can be detected by our tomography. We run some resolution tests using this uh, uh, basically phases of a uh, mantle plume and to find out what is the shape, uh, the possible shape of this uh, mantle upwelling below afar and many Ethiopian rift and also to find which thermal anomaly is required um, to give rise to this plume. So what we try to put a hundred degree anomaly of hot layer and 400 degree but uh, they are respectively too weak and too strong to be um, in agreement with uh, our observation. Instead, a uh, relative destabilization of a 200 degree uh, hot layer as a, a magnitude reduction that is uh, more in agreement with uh, our uh, tomography. So a 200 degree um, hot layer is required below the transition so to explain our um, plumelets. More Uh, in all the upper system uh, using a very large um, um, oh, sorry uh, using a very large data set that I show here and uh, what we find, find uh, this model basically has an improved the resolution compared to existing model and uh, we find out that this um, this uh, uh, low velocity anomaly below East Africa is continuous through the West Arabia and is um, also flowing through uh, Levant and Middle East region and also in the Gulf of Aden. So this uh, low velocity anomaly is um, um, a star shaped anomaly and to understand what, uh, how it extends in deep, I show here some cross section. So the first cross, uh, cross, uh, cross section is cut in the East African rift. What we see is that there is uh, two strong low velocity anomaly just below Kenya and Tanzania and another one in the below Afar. So we, we image the tail of these two plume and extending through the transition zone. And these two plume, the Kenyan plume and the upper plume, seems to share a strong low velocity anomaly in the stenosphere, in the upper mantle here, that is uh, following the extension of the East African rift. This anomaly is, uh, is resembling a curtain, so we call it curtain-like anomaly. That, and it's interesting because this uh, Curtain-like anomaly from uh, East Africa is uh, following the thin lithosphere below the Arabian Shield uh, to and create a hot material channel uh, extending until uh, more or less 300 kilometer depth below the Arabian Shield and also is continuing in the Mesopotamian region and until Anatolia. So this corridor of low velocity anomaly 
basically is considered for us is considered a unique single uh, unique um, head shared by three mantle plume the third mantle plume is an uh, image of just below Iraq uh, here and uh, we call this a uh, new mantle plume 11 plume because it has never been imaged before so this 11 plume uh, is uh, seems to rise just below Iraq in the mantle transition then tilted toward uh, Syria in the upper in the steel sphere uh, um, region this tilting is due to uh, this eigen velocity anomaly over here that probably is there that is the radian platform so this Levan plume, uh, here I, I had some cross section to see the shape, uh, to show you the shape and the um, and extent of this uh, plume. It seems uh, to be tilted, as I say before, uh, in the upper mantle and uh, is consisted to, with the global model that have been proposed before. So if you, I, here I show the same cross section of our uh, model of uh, three different global models that seems to show the same extent and the same low velocity anomaly that we image here, but with higher resolution. Many studies before, especially tomography model, tried to propose another um, mantle route, another plume to, to explain the volcanism in more in the north, in Arabia and the Middle East and uh, Levant, Levant region. For example, Kulakov proposed a, a, a mantle plume just below the Arabian platform to, um, to explain the volcanism, uh, the Arabian rats in the Arabian shield. And also Chang and Van der Lee in 2011 proposed a, uh, another third plume uh, that, is, uh, that is rising below Iraq, but more offset to Jordan. So the, so the global model together with our new model basically uh, confirmed the presence of a third plume, but just below uh, Syria and Iraq. So we also test our model with the resolution test. We, we run some uh, simple spike tests, and, but also I want to underline here uh, more structural tests where we remove basically the low velocity anomaly that we image with our model. We remove the curtain like anomaly uh, below 150 kilometer depth, also the anomaly below the Levant plume, the our Levant plume, uh, basically. And what we, we, we see that is uh, despite some uh, spurious structure that you can see here very weak, uh, our our uh, model uh, image more stronger anomaly. So our in, uh, interpretation, we can interpret with confidence all these uh, uh, features. We also compare again with the uh, P wave global model. how they expand in the lower, how they extend in the lower mountains. So we show here the same cross section of our model and in particular for the Levant plume and the West Arabia, what we see is that apart from the low velocity anomaly that also the global model image, there is a um, below 800 kilometer depth over here and over here, a strong and broad high velocity anomaly that seems to cut the rising of this uh, mantle plume I, at lower mantle depth. So we interpret this uh, high velocity anomaly uh, according to the compilation of the subductus labs in the last 300 million years as uh, the um, Arabian subductus lab that basically subduct together with the Mesopotamian um, subduction along the northeast margin of Eurasia in the late Cretaceous. Also, we compare our result with receiver function of the transition zone discontinuities, uh, uh, the most recent one of Cavani and Sun. Uh, we found, we, we see that the here, especially in the location of the pre plume that we imagine, there is a considerable thinning of the transition zone. So, this confirms the results. So, finally, uh, to understand how this uh, entire system evolved, we use plate reconstruction and uh, um, so the hotspot hot tracks uh, that we plot here so, um, evidence that basically the Afar plume um, at 50, 60, 70 million years uh, was uh, just below the Arabian plateau. This age uh, um, in the Arabian plateau. So we believe that the, the Afar plume when it was, uh, was here was still rising below the lower mountain. 
Instead, the Kenyan plume at 50, uh, 40 million years was just below the Ethiopian lithosphere. And so uh, we think a uh, in, a in agreement with the geochemical uh, studies that the Kenyan plume was the first to trigger the volcanism in this uh, region in Ethiopia. And then after that, with the um, uh, due to the movement of the African place toward northeast, uh, it created the volcanism in uh, this volcanism in all along the East African Rift. And the Kenyan plume is nowadays uh, just below Lake Victoria, more or less. So around 30, 20 million years, uh, this uh, curtain like anomaly that we image uh, continuously below East Africa start to, to, um, to form because hot material coming from uh, below the uh, upper mantle uh, is a uh, rise in basin below the East Africa and uh, connecting the Kenyan plume and the upper plume in a unique, uh, a unique head. So here my conclusion. We believe the intraplate volcanism in the Afro-Arabian rift system is fed by at least a three mantle plume, one believe, uh, below Kenya, the Kenyan plume, another one below Afar, and the other one below Levant, the Levant plume. And these three mantle tail are sharing um, a complex uh, a a mantle head that is more complex in shape, in shape than previously thought, because this, uh, this head, Uh, Chiara, your, your uh, microphone so stopped working somehow just a few seconds ago. Okay. Yeah, now you're back. Could you back. just repeat what you said? Okay. So I was finishing, sorry. <laughs> um, so this basically this uh, plumet is uh, more complex in shape uh, and these star shapes is, uh, more, uh, is not spherical as it was thought before, but is following the channel of thinning and lithosphere, uh, lithosphere and also the thinning uh, of the, also the arrival of the plume just below the lithosphere is also eroding part of the thicker lithosphere on the east in the Arabian platform that is much more thicker than the Sorry, the last few seconds were gone again. <laughs> again, uh, my connection probably is not I'm not sure. Just try, try again. It's okay. Just say the last, the last bit again. Yes. Yeah, so basically, I was saying that there is a complex uh, feedback between the channeling, channeling of this hot material from mantle plume that flow below thinner lithosphere region and the thinning of the lithosphere due to the ponding of the plume to the arrival of the plume just below the, the lithosphere that can uh, sometimes erode also thicker lithosphere in the surrounding area. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Questions? You don't have to type the question in the chat. You just can write question and then you can ask it uh, via the video. Okay. While people are thinking, I would start with one question. You, you talk about different kinds of plumes here. Uh, you have these deep mantle plumes, these massive upwelling under Africa, and then you have smaller scale plumes in the upper mantle, uh, which you call Kenyan plume or, or all the other plumes. Um, now, for the deep mantle plumes, we know from reconstructions and hotspot tracks on oceanic uh, lithosphere that they are kind of fixed, not really fixed, they move a bit, but within first order, they can be considered to be fixed. But you seem to apply this fixity of the plumes also to the upper mantle plumes. How sure can you be that these plumes stay fixed as well? Uh, well, uh, we so well the dismantled plume we believe that they have a source region in the lower mantle. So the upper plume is considered to have an extent also in the lower mantle. So uh, and the same for the Kenyan plume. The Levant plume is more difficult to understand because we see that there is this high velocity anomaly that is cutting the plume. But as well, we think that uh, of course this uh, upper mantle. Uh, plume that we see have a lower mantle origin, and so we think that are can be fixed. That's your hypothesis that they can be fixed, right? Yeah. Do you, yeah. Do you have any evidence that they are fixed, or do you need this hypothesis in order to to infer something? Of, do you have some secondary way of of, of testing for their fixity? 
Uh, no, we didn't, we haven't done yet this one. It can be tested for sure, but probably is the one thing that we have to make sure to do. Yeah. Suzanne has a question. Yeah, I can read it as well. It's this point about the complex um, interaction between the thinning of the lithosphere and, uh, and the plume. It's a bit of a chicken and egg thing, right? Um, so, but would you be willing to, to speculate what, what came first? So if, was the lithosphere already thinned um, because of rifting when, when the first plume material arrived? Or do you think that rifting may have localized above the rising plume or this, this large scale upwelling? Well, uh, we think that probably the rift can localize uh, the, yeah, uh, can basically, or the lithosphere was probably already thin in some part, and is the reason why the hot material is following this uh, thin lithosphere. But what I forgot basically to say is that it can, during this flowing of this material, it can be that the material, for example, here in the Arabian platform, we have a very strong and thick uh, lithosphere. And uh, as, uh, as we suggested by my collaborator, Nicolas Sellis, probably uh, during the flow, you can also carve, carve it uh, uh, additionally. So basically this is uh, what I want to say when I say complex feedback is uh, this uh, complex feedback of already thinned lithosphere and also the possibility to erode and carve additionally when the flow material get in contact with the colder lithosphere in the in the west in this case yeah thanks I, I i would sort of agree to that it's like the, the plume gets channeled into an area where the lithosphere is already thinner and then we can sit there and helps the rifting to continue yeah yeah thanks <laughs>